reshade and the depth buffer. This has been a massive talk or conflict uh, since Marty came out with the ray tracing, uh, because you need the, the you need the depth buffer in order for the ray tracing to get the information it needs. And you get you can see what we have here with display depth, right here at the bottom for me. You can just click and drag them around. It's always good to have this at the bottom, so it will be loaded last. This is what a working depth buffer looks like. You have the normals on the left side, you have the depth on the right side. If your display depth looks like this, that means your depth buffer is working. But let's go and just run through the process. I'm going to be also be uh, switching a game that has temporal anti-aliasing because that causes other issues. But we'll cross that bridge when we get there. As with everything I do, I always recommend starting from the beginning. And from the beginning, we will need to first install Reshade. It is up here at reshade.me. You will see this. It has a nice little home page. I don't know what this background is. It might be Horizon Zero Dawn. Uh, anyway, so click download. It will take you automatically to the bottom here. The latest version is 4.7.0. And if you are coming here for how to do depth with ray tracing, this is the version you need. You will always need the latest version for the latest version of Marty's RTGI. So, just going to download that, save that file. This is Firefox, so using it on Chrome might be different, but I'm going to open the containing folder. And here it is, Reshade Setup 4.7.0. We're going to double click that, we're going to choose a game, and for this demonstration I'm going to choose Final Fantasy XV. If you do not see the game here in this list, you can always click Browse, go to wherever your, uh, uh, wherever your install location is. For me it's on uh, my NVMe, I named it Sonic Drive because I'm original. Steam, Steam Apps, most likely everyone uses Steam, it'll be in Steam. Steam Apps, common. You know, Final Fantasy 15. You are looking for the application. If it is not directly in this, it might be in a folder named bin. Uh, for example, let's look at uh, Hat in Time. Where is it? There it is, Hat in Time. So like, it's not here, but Hat in Time would be Binaries, Win64, Hat in Time game. But let's just go back uh, because we're using Final Fantasy 15. For the most part, it will already detect what uh, DirectX version it is. Uh, for example, Final Fantasy 15 is DirectX 11, and this kind of falls into a nice little umbrella 10, 11, and 12. If you are unsure what version it is, the PC Gaming Wiki can help. It will be here. So you can search for, well, let's keep it up. Uh, let's see, you know, you want to know what Grand Theft Auto 5 is. Okay. So you will look over to other information. And it says here, DirectX 10, 10.1, and 11, which conveniently falls under this. So you will, or if you're doing Grand Theft Auto 5, you will click Direct 3D 10, 11, 12, because that's what matches. Let's check. Well, I mentioned a hat in time before. So there's a hat in time, other information. Had in time is DirectX 9. So if you install it for a had in time, it might already choose DirectX 9, but if it doesn't, you will manually click DirectX 9. Aside from that, back to 15, we will click that button. It already exists, but does not belong to Reshade. 
did I already do? Oh, right, because there is a mod for Final Fantasy 15 inside already. So I can't do that. It's already got one. But I don't care about that. We'll just delete that. And I will do it again. I'm select it. Final C 15. Yeah. I skipped through some things. I clicked too fast. Click 15. Use. We're going to, since I accidentally clicked and I made a version, I'm going to update it. And now we get to choose effects. Uh, what we do need, definitely, is the standard effects up here. These ones are nice to have for color corrections. Uh, I will install something uh, that requires depth, like the MXAO from Marty in the public Quint version. I will hit OK. It will give us a list of things to download. The only thing I care about is... D-band, because it, it helps gradients in the sky, especially when it gets dark. Uh, you might know what I'm talking about, you might not, doesn't matter. The important shader is display depth. That is the one we need. I'm going to uncheck these, because I like adding those. I'm going to uncheck those, get some depth of field, MXAO, just to show depth effects. Okay. I like showing FPS. Uh, if this is your first time installing Reshade, do not skip the tutorial. You do it. You read it. And we're going to go through it together, too. So, I'm going to load up a save file for Final Fantasy XV, and we'll see how that goes. When you first start up Reshade, you will see... Oh, it's not going to show me. But up here at the top, you'll see that there is a successfully installed bar. And it will ask you to press home to start the tutorial. So we shall do that. So, for the first time, it'll go through a quick tutorial. Just continue to start it. Up here is where you will do all of your presets. You can make new presets, you can delete old presets. For now, I only use one preset, so I'll just leave it default. But if you need to make more, you can always click the little plus button, give it a name, say, I don't know, FF15. There. Now we are using FF15, and if we want to, it's not here. Neat. Maybe it already deleted that, so let's try FF15 new. Now there should be two. Nope, it's going to be weird. Okay, cool. Anyway, I'll worry about that later. So here's your list of effects. What we care about mostly is display depth, because this shows us the depth. It seems that for Final Fantasy XV, it works right off the start, but you might notice everything is kind of jittery. That's because of temporal anti-aliasing. So this is your effect order. You can click and drag. You can reorder them however you want. Uh, just know that the effects are layered in real time from top to bottom. And I'll show you a side effect of that later. So here's your list of variables. So again, we turn on display depth. We see all the effects in here. You get SMAA. You see the effect. You see all the options in there. That's how that works. So what we care about is, well, let's first turn on display depth. So we have a working display depth on Final Fantasy 15 to start with. This is good. But let's say it wasn't working. What do we do then? Well, let's break it. I'm going to break it on purpose. This is the most common display depth view you will see if your depth is not working. This means your depth is reversed. You will see mostly purple on the normal side here. 
you will see mostly black on the depth side here. Now, even if you have it fixed in display depth, like this looks like it's working. You can tell it's not working by clicking global preprocessor definitions. You click that, and this is what Reshade actually sees. Now, the reason there is the split is so that you can help find whether your thing is reversed. You can change it here on the fly. So once you find the right settings here, I'm just, I'm just going to completely break this. And yeah, there, there we go. Now it's completely broken. So you turn on display depth and you're just like, what the actual heck is this? I'll go through it. First, we need to see, we're going to ignore this. We're going to leave global preprocessor off first. You need to figure out what's wrong with it. Is it logarithmic? Well, that's not changing anything. Is it reversed? Hmm. Well, that's not changing anything. Is it upside down? That's not changing anything. If nothing changes in this setting here, all the way at the top, it'll always be at the very end. It'll say DirectX 11. It'll say DirectX 10. It could say Vulkan. It will depend on what engine the game is running. But this will always be your depth, always at the very end. So right here, we have the depth buffers. This is what the game, or this is what Reshade can see from the game. Right now, we are using a depth buffer that is a 4K square, 4096 by 4096. There is roughly 600 draw calls and a bunch of vertices. It's, it, it's 3D model related. You don't need to worry about that. But this one here, this one matches my resolution, 2560 by 1440. It is also more active than the other one. So we'll click on this. If it lets me, it won't because it's, it's weird. It, temporal anti-aliasing does that. It keeps jittering a depth buffer back and forth really, really quickly. That's why it looks like it shakes. So we have a picture here. This is good. We have something. It's upside down. Okay. Well, now it's not upside down. Is it logarithmic? Oh, well, something changed here. See, this is not right. We, we don't want this. Logarithmic zero. That also looks wrong. But we're still not getting depth, right? So let's, re let's unreverse this. So now we have depth. Prince. Oh, it's gonna give me a cutscene. See how everything is stripey? This truck is just... There's a lot of stripes on this truck. It looks like absolute garbo. So this is the wrong logarithmic. We don't, we don't want that. Now it's nice and smooth. Turn it back on just to see. Got a lot of stripes over here. A lot of noise. That's garbage. We don't want that. Nice and smooth. All good. So, I'm going to also break this. So we have just gotten a working depth buffer in display depth. Now we are going to use, so just remember these settings. Your far plane could also be like way off. So let's say, there. We have a far plane of one. Well, that's, that's way too close. You get, you get more uh, distance and detail by doing this. By default, you usually never have to touch that. Just leave it at 1000. Don't touch it. You want, you, 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 you don't, don't, don't touch it. No touch. Depth multiplier is also another one that can sometimes work, but it's very touchy. You, again, generally, leave it, no touch. You want to touch, you don't touch, you leave it. Bad. So, to check and make sure that all our settings are correct, you will now click Global Preprocessor Definitions. And 
it's broken again. But that's because there are settings that Reshade uses in this blue button here. You're going to click that. See, now these settings that we changed here that work, we're going to make the numbers inside this button the same as these ones. So everything is at zero. We go in here. Yeah, this is 1000. You leave it. No touch. I'm going to put zero. 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 I like tapping enter just to be sure. And now you click off. And everything should be working. You can toggle that on and off. It's the same. It's working. So now we can add stuff like depth of field. Now we can add stuff like MXAO, a little bit of shading. I will leave autofocus on just because this will prove another point about the layering. Let's just crank the intensity of this. This is just for example. So we have some really intense MXAO shading. You can see it in here. But hold on a second. This is really sharp when it's supposed to be blurry. This is because the layer order is doing depth of field first and then the shading. But what we want to do is we want to do shading first and then depth of field. So we reorder it here and now it blends in nicely. You can turn it off, turn it on, see that there's a difference being made but it's also layered correct. We want shading first, then depth of field. And that is roughly how it's going to be. Uh, let's see if I can find, go for another example. We have, I'm going to turn on the debug and, oh, look at that. It is noisy AF. This is because in the display depth, it's also shaking. And this is because some games use TAA or temporal anti-aliasing. I'm just going to go and turn those off. So for graphics, what you want to do is look for your anti-aliasing options. And you can use FXAA if uh, you don't want to add any other anti-aliasing through reshade. But I usually like turning it off. You don't want anti-aliasing if you're using depth shaders because it doesn't match up. It creates a mismatch. So our anti-aliasing is off. We will now turn on the display depth. It's not shaking anymore, but it is pretty, you know, jagged edges. Not many people like that. But that is the reason why I also installed FXAA and SMAA. You can turn those on and it makes the edges smoother. Let's find a bit of a noisier example like this. Like this here. This is going to be a decent example. I might have to zoom in for this one. So we have it off. We have it on. You can always change the strength of it. Uh, settings I like to use is those all the way down. But then I also turn this to about 24, 4, and off. Uh, and off. I actually like how that looks. And you have the benefit of also anti-aliasing your uh, shading. So I'm going to turn that back to none. Now we have true cinematic quality. Ah, oh, so HD. It's awesome. It's that. It's actually the worst. Don't do this. I will dislike you for it. Don't. Don't actually. This isn't good. I mean, like maybe you like the depth of field, but yeah. One thing to also note is that things like the uh, user interface, as you will see over here, do not contribute to the depth. 
it's not in the display depth buffer, it will... It might as well just be a projected sticker on the entire world. It will always conform to depth, because you can see it just kind of fade off with the rest of the world. Also, the uh, little weapon icon here just kind of fades in and out, depending on whether it's overlaid on something with depth versus something without it. And that is the basics of it. Just a quick recap. Display depth. You want to make, you want it to look good here. You will open the preprocessors. You will match these settings to these settings. Use global preprocessor. I am stuttering over myself. Use global preprocessor to make sure it looks good, and you are off to the races. I'm going to do another recap on a different game, so let's just make it quick, right? Okay, just to recap with Dark Souls 3, new game, we installed it, let's look at display depth, oh, that's not right. Chances are, remember, if it's mostly purple, like maybe a bit of blue, that's reversed. We're doing like this, there we go, nice green ground, we see the depth here. Okay, so let's just turn on, uh, let's turn on some shading. Oh, wait a second. This isn't right. I'm not supposed to be all shaded in. No, the game, the cracks and crevices are. But that's because we forgot to check global pro, pro gl, the, the, this button. That's because this is wrong. This needs to be zero to match. Enter, unclick. There we go. Turn display depth off. And now we have the, oops, where'd it go? The correct shading. Hopefully, uh, I know this was a long-winded explanation, but hopefully this covers pretty much everything. There's going to be some games that have some weird quirks, but that's just, uh, for the most part, 90% of the games, this should work. For the other few percent, like maybe the other 9%, you might have to manually choose a different buffer. Because sometimes, Reshade doesn't choose the right one. You want to go to the one always at the end, look for your resolution, and check which one it is. Because sometimes, Maybe this one has the higher draw calls or vertices. Maybe it's that one, but chances are it's not. Here's one that's a half resolution depth buffer, but we don't want that because that is 720p and I play in 1440p. Quarter, half, full. You get the idea. Always at the end. So, good luck. Hopefully this fixes all your shader issues that require depth, mostly RTGI. I, I know. You know. I know. Now we both know. Uh, just bug me in the comments. I usually respond to them if, uh, if I can. And the community can help you as well. Have fun!